This is the Little League World Series, and today, in all its glory, sun is shining, temperature in the mid-80s, and a huge crowd has descended upon South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. They get a chance to watch not one, not two, not three, but four Little League World Series games. That's Lomity Stadium, and you see the kids from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and the boys from Barrington, Rhode Island. That is today's elimination game. In fact, all four games today elimination games well, we're going to have a blast covering it for you this is a division of little league international with 16 teams that have ended up making their way here from a field of about 6500 leagues boys and girls and we do have a terrific young girl playing in this one ages 10 to 12 games are six innings long the fields are two-thirds conventional the field size with the pitching mound 46 feet away and the base paths 60 feet in length Curacao and Virginia, way to get things started, boys. How about no hitters? Both of them threw it, and Virginia used three different guys. They'll play again tomorrow, and every one of their pitchers will be available. Kyle Peterson was across the pond the other day, got a chance to watch these international kids. They had some web gems. So do the kids from the United States side, including one that really stung this group from Bowling Green, and that's Maddie Frecking, who's the 19th girl to play at the Little League World Series. She's part of the team from Minnesota that won yesterday. She made some terrific plays in the field. Last year, Honolulu won the whole thing, and lo and behold, it's Maui this year that has established themselves as, if not the favorite, certainly one of the favorites to win the whole thing. There's the South Riding Virginia team, Coon Rapids, Minnesota, Hawaii, and Elizabeth, New Jersey got a win last night with a big fifth inning as they came back to beat Oregon. All the 0-1 teams in action today. You go 0-2 and, and your chance to win a championship is all over. So before we get to our game, a reminder that we also have more games coming up at 6 and at 8 o'clock Eastern time. One at Volunteer on the international side. The kids from Canada will take on the kids from Italy. And then at 8 o'clock on ESPN2, it'll be Louisiana and Oregon. So we are sort of deep into it. Our first day, we had no games on the United States side because of Arena. We had a marathon four games yesterday. Kyle Peterson, Carl Ravitch, Julie Foudy joins us in just a second. It felt like yesterday was like the culmination of everything, and you realize you're only two games into this, but two games in a tournament like this, and you lose both, everything kind of comes very quickly. Yeah, it starts speeding up a little yeah. bit after the first. You play seven games in one day, and it does feel like you played a ton already, but everybody got one in. Maracaibo, Venezuela, and Australia have now had two in. Maracaibo eliminated Australia for title contention, and it's just the first two days here about as much fun as you can possibly yeah, have. I would see the kids on the field for the first time and just the looks on their eyes right. when they walk out of these two. I should know this. How old are you now? Uh, I'm 43. Thanks. Right, so you're 43. So the coach for this Bowling Green team has been coaching the same Little League yeah. since you were three years old. 40 years, Rick Kelly. And they're back again here third time in the last handful of years. As he jokingly said, it took me a long time to get here. But, boy, he's built a little juggernaut there. Yeah, since he showed up. He's now been here three times in the last five years. Got a chance to coach his son here one time here at the Little League World Series. And we weren't sure whether they would be playing today or tomorrow. And if this ball had gotten past Jackson Knutson, they, will be, they would be playing tomorrow. Instead, it's caught that end of the fifth inning. Would have scored at least one run, Rav, and potentially two. But instead now, it's a quick turnaround for the Great Lakes kids. And this Kentucky team, Bowling Green team, since they've come here, they've won at least two games every time they've been here to the Little League World Series. We'll get to the Rhode Island story in just a minute, but there's much more about this Kentucky team that you need to know. They are a passionate group that is playing for a lot more than the kids that are just on the field now. Here's Julie Foudy with more. Indeed, Carl. In fact, anytime you talk to a player or parent from Kentucky, they want to talk about the impact of former teammate Mason Goodnight. And Mason died tragically in 2017 from bacterial meningitis. And so the team said, we're going to dedicate this entire season to Mason. And in fact, Jeff, sorry, Jeff Goodnight, the father of Mason, is still helping coach the team. He said, I don't know what I would do without these boys. And they have kept Mason very close to their heart. They marched in opening ceremonies, holding his jersey. They hang the jersey in the dugout during every single game. Uh, and, and it is near and dear to them. They call, call themselves the Mason Marvels. And I said to them today, you got your guardian angel, Mason? Mason, looking over you, are you thinking about him today? And they said, ma'am, we think about Mason every single day with a big smile. Julie, thank you. And to the 
sort of point about how all these teams that get here end up becoming very close and very friendly with each other and they are impacted by each other. Watch what happened just a few seconds ago when the Rhode Island team went over to greet the kids from Bowling Green. They then went over and made sure that they made contact with Mason Goodnight's jersey. So they too are understanding of the impact that Mason and the dad have had on this program and the community has had on the Goodnight family as well. We'll have much more on that story through the course of our game. On the other side, you do have a Rhode Island team. They may not have had a coach coach the same little league for 40 years or so, but they have become a state that tends to show up here in Williamsport consistently five times in the last six years, KP. Yeah, I mean, that just tells you how good the game is in the state of Rhode Island right now. And for the kids from Barrington, coming back, no hitting the first. And, Rap, you had a chance to see him in the regional for a full week, and this is a team that obviously swung the bats well there. Here's the thing for the kids from Rhode Island. They've been here before. They lost their first game of districts, came yep. back and won the next seven. They've won ten elimination games in a row. So they've been in the spot, and obviously they've responded well in the past. I think the perspective on both is great, and these two teams get along. We're going to have a lot of fun today watching Rhode Island and Bowling Green, Kentucky. Here's looking at you, kid, and Owen Pfeffer, who will be pitching today. That's him. We're going to play 21 questions. A little chatter before we go. First of all, tell me about this dining hall. The best part is the ice cream. Really? Funny you say that, Owen. Look what I might have right here. A little selection. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, one item, would it be ice cream? That is a hard one. Probably ice cream. Do you want to do a bad joke off? Sure. Do you know how this works? If you laugh, you lose. Yeah, laugh, you lose. Are you ready? I might have to put my popsicle down for this. You go first. I go first, okay? What do you call a deer with no eyes? I don't know. No idea. <laughs> you lose. I mean, come on. <laughs> Seriously. You cannot laugh at the first one. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> day in South Williamsport, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And the first look at the mighty Sus, which today probably has a lot of traffic on it. The Susquehanna River. Runs all the way from the Cooperstown Hall of Fame down here to the Little League Museum and the Hall of Fame. Dugout's getting busy. Probably a little warm underneath that uh, dugout costume, but it's a perfect day for baseball. You go around the country and you got all sorts of regions here, Northwest, West, Southwest, Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, and we're focused on the New England region and those states, Connecticut, Maine, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Congratulations to the good folks of Madison, Connecticut. They were the representative from the state of Connecticut today, knocking off some powers to get to Bristol. Lewiston, Maine. Made it from the great state of Maine, Walpole, Massachusetts. Traveled on 90 to 84. Goffstown, New Hampshire, back again. And just coming up a little shy. Bradford, Vermont, the champions of that state. And Barrington, Rhode Island, of course, here for the fifth time in six years, representing the Ocean State. And on the United States regional poolside, the Great Lakes, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Of course, Bowling Green, the team that got here. But I want to give a shout out to the boys from River Forest, Illinois. They were the champions there. Indiana sent Sellersburg to the regional championships. Bay City, Michigan, winning that great state's tournament. Hamilton, Ohio, coming out of Wisconsin. Glendale, the Little Leaguers there. And, of course, Bowling Green. The ultimate goal is to get to Williamsport. But, man, if you can win your state championship, you've done a, a heck of a lot of work. Ty, what do you know about Bowling Green, Kentucky? Well, it says right there, it's about 70,000 people, Rav, <laughs> says on that, uh, that graphic we've got just north of Nashville. we got Western Kentucky fans, we got UK fans, and we've got some Louisville fans all around. All right, let's meet the team. It is brought to you by The Office Depot. My name is Jackson Idlett, and my favorite actor is Jim Carrey. My name is Luke Idlett, and my favorite app is Snapchat. My name is Whit Glossick and my favorite actor is Tom Holland. My name is Evan Chandler and my favorite food is buffalo wings. My name is Jameson Napper and my favorite baseball player is Francisco Lindor. My name is Saul Geyer and my favorite baseball player is Dave Ortiz. My name is Matthew Escalera and my favorite app is YouTube. My name is Harrison Yates and my favorite emoji is the fire. My name is Chas Huff and my favorite player is Joey Votto. 
My name is Grace Newman. My favorite team is the Atlanta Braves. My name is Nick Simpson, and my favorite game to play is Fortnite. My name is Eli Christ, and my favorite emoji is the face palm. My name is Cameron Obi, and my favorite athlete is Zion Williamson. My name is William Alexander, and my favorite athlete is John Moran. <laughs> There they are. I think everybody enjoys a good wing now and then, don't you? Why wouldn't you? A little buffalo yeah, wing? Not just one. Rick Kelly's probably had a few of those over his course as a 40-year manager of the same Little League. And for the third time, just think about how difficult it is to get out of your district, let alone your region and state. He's been here three times. And we are set for baseball. Elimination game between Bowling Green and Barrington, Rhode Island. It'll be Evan Schallert, the shortstop, and Owen Pfeffer on the mound. Hurt. So you get Pfeffer on the mound, and in center field is Alex Anderson. And between those two guys, they have started 15 of the 17 games that Rhode Island has played. So they like the guy they've got out there right now. They have great faith in him. Lefty works fast. Ground ball to second, fielded by Mason Crane. There you go. <laughs> Defense has been outstanding. No matter what field you're watching, volunteer or Lomity, and that's a good start for Crane. That's the one thing that sticks out every year at the Little League World Series is you go down to volunteer here, and you're going to see some kids that can really throw the lever. Goes backhand side from the knee. One out on two pitches here to start him. Grayson Newman next up. He got jammed, and pitcher will barehand. How about that little play? Now? Two for two. Owen Pfeffer picks it up. I've seen a lot of Rhode Island call between the regionals and whatnot. This is what they do. They pitch to contact and they do catch the ball. Well, you throw a fastball on the inside part of the plate. I don't care how hard you, you throw. A lot of times that'll tie somebody up. A little two hopper back to the mound. Bear hands it has plenty of time. Shows that ball to his first baseman. That's two quick outs here in the top of the first row. Number three hitter, Jamison Knapper. And he swings at the first one. As you begin to watch this year's Little League World Series tournament, you have boys and girls that are 10 to 12. So hitting the ball over the wall, you've got to really get into one. And you'll notice that they're a little more aggressive at the plate. They're not a lot of waiting around for balls one, two, three, and four. They're coming up and they're swinging. It's refreshing. Well. So last year's Little League World Series, about 40% of the kids were 13 when yeah. we saw them here. This yep. year rules change. Can't turn 13 before September 1st. So. We're all 12 year olds and I know you you went all the way through regionals. There, there's a little bit of a difference. I think ultimately it's a good thing. Yeah, I agree. This one's fouled off. Oh, yeah, a little funnel yeah. cake early. That's an aggressive start. We got a long day. <laughs> I like the approach. If you're going to go go. Huge crowds on hand today for Napper, who swings and rolls one down the first baseline. That's a foul ball. So our guy Jamison here at the plate, with all the people that are in the stands, they get some exclusive uh, company up in the Grove. And the first day he got here, he was in the playroom and he saw the Japanese kids playing MLB the show. So you, what do you do? You go to your phone. Grab your phone. Let's figure out how we speak Japanese. Google Translate. Try to start a handshake, and now he's got some buddies on the Japanese side. Really good start for Owen Pfeffer. We'll see Rhode Island come to the plate when we come back. Underway. <laughs> the field, but in the booth, feeling good. Kentucky, Rhode Island has gone zero, and here come the kids from Barrington in the bottom of the first. So where are we in Barrington, Rhode Island? Take a look at the city profile. It's right on the water. Beautiful. 16,089, about 10 miles southeast of Providence. And you know Brad Faxon? You know what he could do? I've heard of Brad He Faxon. could roll the rock when yeah, he was he on the PGA. And, of course, Brad Faxon, Billy Andre, two of the PGA professionals from Rhode Island. Let's meet the kids, presented by the Office Depot. My name's Alex Anderson, and my favorite baseball player is Mookie Betts. My name is Owen Pfeffer, and my favorite baseball player is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Hi, my name is Colin Crane, and my favorite band is Migos. My name is James Calderon, and my favorite subject is math. My name is Miles Fontaine, and my favorite emoji is the 100. My name is Lucas Tanis, and my favorite band is Green Day. My name is Chase Watts, and my favorite food is teriyaki chicken. My name is Christopher Bermatis, and my favorite baseball player is Mookie Betts. My name is Matthew Feedy, and my favorite emoji is thumbs up. My name is Mason Crane, and my favorite sports team is the Boston Bruins. Hi, my name is Blake Dawn, and my favorite band is Queen.
My name is Will DiGiacomo, and my favorite athlete is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Hi, my name is Henry Kelsey, and my favorite athlete is David Pasternak. There's a lot of things to take from that. I think the idea is to take just one aspect of one of the things that one of the boys says, and the idea that we had somebody who could pronounce Antetokounmpo, I think that stood out to me. Anything yeah. for you? Uh, yeah, I'll go with that as well. Yeah, I, I can't, no. so that's significantly better than I. Let alone spell it. Chris Pramatis looks at his team and says this is a uh, bunch of hockey player type scrappers. You heard some hockey references in there. About half the team plays hockey. And they have, uh, as Kyle said, had their backs up against the wall. So he's at least comfortable being in this position. I'm not sure how comfortable it's going to be to face a guy like William Alexander on the mound. That's a big kid out there. Uh, that's a big left-hander who can strike some kids out. So in the regional for Will Alexander, he punched out 12 and 5 and 2 thirds innings. And Remember, this mound's only 46 feet away. You get a big kid out there, that long strike going towards home plate. By the time he lets that baseball go, I mean, he's he's 40 feet or less away from home plate. There's this. not a lot of time to react. All right, here's Colin Crane, who stands four foot ten, weighs 85 pounds. And looks at strike one. This is a difficult team. He gave those numbers about strikeouts from Alexander. This team does not strike out a lot. They will put the ball in play. Oh. This is one of those he plays for the Providence Hockey Club. He is a center and left wing. You know how difficult it would be to kind of shadow Cullen Crane at 4-10? Like you wouldn't be able to find him out He's there. Zipping all over the ice. Oh. Look at him choke way up on that bat. He's got a twin on this team, and every time he asks Cullen who's better at anything, the answer is me. Oh. Just me. That's kind of what twins are supposed to do, I think. So call it hoot me. Yeah, you don't even need to finish. No. Who? Not, not him. Right. Which one? Me. There's a slow roller, and Luke Eidlin is there to make the play, starting the same way that Kentucky did with a ground out to the second baseman. And here comes big number seven, Lucas Tanis. Figure a kid from Rhode Island, usually Red Sox fan. Occasionally you'll have some Yankee stuff bleed in there. Not Lucas. He's the New York Met fan. Here's a reason for that. The Mets helped put the food on the Tanis table. Lucas's dad is the vice president of scouting for the New York Mets. And there you see him. Thomas Tanis, the VP of scouting. Believe responsible for finding Pete Alonzo. Now they could have consulted you on that, KP. I mean, you were you were on Alonzo when he was a real young guy. Pete was Pete was alive when he was in college too. Right. Bat worked then, and obviously it's working at the big league level this year. On the ground, a good hop and played well by Evan Schaller. This defense looks good early. Two for two on a six-three put out. A little adjustment by Evan Shallot, the shortstop right there, started to charge and recognized he could get a bigger hop if he gave ground a little bit. Did. Makes that play a little bit easy. Two ground ball outs to start it. Guys are throwing strikes. We like this. Here comes Owen Pfeffer, the pitcher. Got a big brother, Michael, who's helped him a lot with his baseball. He played through high school as well. You know, Michael seems to be more pumped up almost than Owen is about this trip to Williamsport. Oh. We see out there Michael, his brother attends Boston University. Oh. He doesn't have a nickname, but if he had one, what do you think it would be? One just jumps off what? the table at me, and I'm not sure if I'm, I'm just. Fire. I, would, I would go with Pfeffernutter. Like, is that just so oh. weird? That's what jumped off the table? Yeah, like Fluffernutter. Yeah, Pfeffernutter. Yeah. So what what like what didn't jump off the table if that was the first thing there was no other no that nothing else entered one. yeah that That's, just planted itself would, in there I would check the table I'm <laughs> <laughs> playing at a different table that's what you're saying you yeah. and I are everybody's got their own table pretty standard they've got their own pins I like it There's plenty of that around here when's you know the else? rav pin going to show up uh, it's a good question. How about the strategy, though? We're going to trade pins, but everybody in the shade. Good move. Huge part of the 
Little League experience, let alone Little League World Series, but Little League experience. Got a big pen up here in the booth. I don't know if you've seen this thing. This is this is a big one. And there is a short one and yeah, fielded lefty. cleanly. How about William Alexander? Yeah, That's right. How about having to turn your whole body on this play? Big William Alexander turns around and makes the play and uh, hold your horses may have our first challenge of the day. Watch this one now. We've got to come all the way over. Swing and bunt. Opens up to that side. Bare hands and there's no chance. If he gloves it, there's no chance he's going to get him. What do you got, Rap? I think they just got him. I think he's out. All in glove and he think he's out. Umpires have done yep. a really good job and a good stretch there by Chaz Huff at first base. But the prerogative of the manager is to ask for a review if he feels the call was incorrect. We'll find out if it's going to stand or not. This is where I would I think I would walk back after the call is going to be upheld and say you know what it's probably why I'm coaching and he's umpiring. It's a pretty good call right there. It's a hard thing to do but these guys and these women listen and watch get it right. Listen and watch out by a half step and two clean innings to start it. We got a good one. Hills full second hill starting to fill up on the scoreless first. In Nevada boiling oil. Nowadays nothing's off limits. Concoctions and confections of every shape and size can and will be fried alongside the action and savored with deep affection at the Little League World Series. Get all in there. Yeah, this is a great day for ice cream, vanilla, chocolate, maybe a little swirl. Ooh. All right, we want to. Extend a special thank you to the official sponsors of Little League, Lance and Cannon, who helped maintain the strength and leadership of this Little League program. How can you be serious when that's going on? Little League wants to thank its dedicated volunteers who make the program a special place for millions of children. That's brain freeze all over it. Yeah, I don't know what that was, but there's nothing left. Here's William Alexander, a.k.a. who the Hulk, and he fires one back up this way on a foul ball. Because of the story Julie told with Mason Goodnight and the Mason Marvels, a lot of the kids have adopted nicknames based on Marvel characters, which is why we have William Alexander the Hulk. William looks like if he gets a hold of one, he could put a Hulk like blast into it, too. The Hulk can probably give it a ride. Look good on the mound to start this one. That was my lunch buddy the other day. We were up top. You and the Hulk? Yeah, me and the Hulk. Hulk can eat. <laughs> oh, he gets punched out on a tough pitch from Owen Pfeffer. Back to back strikeouts. Let's bring in our buddy Julie. Carl, you were talking about Owen Pfeffer's brother Michael. I found Michael, and we were talking up above before about how you were such an influence in his baseball career, Michael. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I've been working with him since the day he picked up a baseball. It's been a lot of fun. It's kind of created a bond between the two of us. And. Uh, it's given us something that we enjoy spending time together. It gives us a reason to hang out and not to argue and fight. <laughs> who, who made him a lefty? Are you responsible for that, Michael? A uh, mm, little bit, but it's actually my dad. We, uh, when he was like two, we used to, he'd pick the ball up with his right hand and we'd take it out of the right hand and stick it in the left and hold his hand by his side and ask him to throw it back to us. So over time, he did become a lefty. He was forced into being a lefty. All right, and most pressing, what do you think of the nickname Pfeffernutter? I think it's something we could pick up on. I don't know. I think his friends in high school might call him a little soft with the with the Pfeffernutter, but uh, it works for now, you know? Yeah. I, I like it. Yes, thank you. And, Ravi will be very excited yeah. about that. Thank Just you. want to uh, shout out the boys at home. All right. Enjoy the game. Consider it done, and you keep shouting out all you want with the Pfeffernutter approval rating. Yeah, I don't know that that was really an approval. Well, it's a start. Back to the backstop but goes after the error was charged to James Calderella. You know that bunt too. Calderella really read it. He came charging in and uh, his pitcher Owen Pfeffer came to the baseball right around the same time. Would have been a close play after the bunt from Luke Eidlitz. So he moves to second. Chaz Huff on a 1-1.
Rips it right to him. Looks him back. Now throws and two third goes Eidlett. Good base running. Really hard with 60 feet separating the bases to look somebody that far back that on a throw across the diamond they're not going to move to the next base. It's good all the way around too, and that's not an easy when you when you're right on the cut of that grass. You're not sure if it's going to hit grass or dirt before it gets into your glove. James Calderella waits for it, hooks that runner back. But you're right with these short bases. Any speed, he can go second to third right there, but they got the big second out. Nick Simpson is going to bat here, and he had a double yesterday. He was starting the game on the bench. Matthew Escalera's spot up here. He got jammed straight up, straight up, no. Oh. <laughs> Christopher Promatis was unable to locate. <laughs> trying to help him. You got to point it out, Rav. Straight up, straight up. That wasn't enough. It would have had the same impact as straight up, straight up. Oh, if okay. I started pointing, you don't think that would have helped. I don't think he's checking me out. Good pitch and an effort to get out of a jam from Owen Pfeffer. They leave a runner at third. That is approved by Brig Brother, who approved Puffer Nutter. We're all strikeouts in. in the inning for. I'll go there for <laughs> Puffer Nutter. Three <laughs> in a game so far. It's too scoreless to we'll start. We'll continue. And a word from our ABC stations. Do you have time for a couple questions? Yeah, sure. What's your favorite ballpark food? A hot dog. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. Kentucky or Louisville? Kentucky. Sitting at the pool or on the beach? Beach. PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. What's your favorite movie? Spider-Man Far From Home. What's your favorite thing about Williamsport? Meeting all the kids from around the world. Cubs or Pirates? Cubs. Christian Yelich or Mike Trout? Mike Trout. Can we see your best Trout impression? Yeah, sure. Aha. Nice. Let's go! Another funny story about Wick Glossick. When he was watching the 2016 Little League World Series, Bowling Green in that one as well. Well, a friend of his, Patrick Forbes, did this fantastic hair flip. And he saw Patrick after the Little League World Series, and he said, hey, I'm going to do that if I get to the Little, Little League World Series one day. Hi, my name's Patrick Forbes, and I love my hair. Hey, Patrick. Um, if I ever make it to the World Series, I hope my hair looks as good as yours. Let's go BG East. Yeah, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Did a force earlier. I, that's motivation. That's whiplash. That's a good looking head of locks we got working too. So 16 there here, and if I ever get there, and then lo and behold, three years later, here he is. Now he's got to do it. He did. Delivered. Stylin. Good speed too. Mike Trout like speed. The old museum up on top of the hill here. This is Mason Crane, one of the great nicknames ever. Uber. Given to him by uh, his coaches because Mace doesn't run like Mike Trout. So his coach just suggested that perhaps Uber is the best way to get around the bases. <laughs> Mason laughed at that. He thought it was a really good one, so it stuck. Well, those are usually the ones that do stick. Well, that's a good walk, and Uber heads down to first. Now the question becomes, will the head coach who named him Uber say, we got to get a little quicker mode of transportation on the basis, which appears to be exactly what Christopher Pramati, Pramatis is doing. It's going to be Will DiGiacomo. Did we just trade a lift for an Uber? Like yeah. what happened there? Yeah. Oh, that's is that what that was. Let's get that going. So man on first for Christopher Promatis, and he looks at ball one. Here comes Rick Kelly. He saw something that we're going to listen in on. You're aiming the ball. 
Just rock and shoot it. Throw strikes. Let them put it in play. Just throw strikes. Let's go. So, 40 year manager saw something there. Would well, 40 years you learn that short and sweet sometimes the best. Yeah. Just go out and real quick. Just pick the thing up, throw it where the glove is as hard as you can. And not easy to do in an environment like this. Throw a few balls, start thinking a little bit. Throw a strike, you get locked back in pretty quick. That's better, and there's a swing and a strike. Alexander threw the first four hitters, fell behind each one of them, so he was always at least in a 1 0 hole, and now he's back to 1 and 1 against Bumpy Promatus. That's his nickname. Oh! That one didn't miss by much. Mary Beth Promatus. And of course, Dad Chris down there at first. Bumpy was uh, named such because he kept bumping into things. And he hammers this one to center field. That's where Newman is, and he had to go back to make the play for the first out. Hit well by. Christopher, but at 411, 111. That may be it. Alex Anderson steps in yesterday's pitcher, and he pitched a terrific game yesterday. Problem for Rhode Island yesterday. They got no hit by a good Virginia pitching staff. Oh. That one is high ball one. Three different pitchers on that no hitter, wasn't it, for Virginia? And they wisely got a lead and they decided, you know what, we got really capable arms after the 35th pitch. We're bringing them out so in two days oh. they'd be available, and all the teams that won yesterday play tomorrow, so they've got their whole play staff tomorrow. ready to go. Yeah. Once again, William Alexander finding himself in a little bit of a hole. Oh. That one misses. So, yeah, one of the twins goes down to first base. Gabe Anderson, who we just saw, is another twin. He's 11, but Gabe doesn't play baseball. He's into tennis and golf. That make cool sign, though. That's my twin. That's my twin. Like the independence, too. You know what? I'm, I'm into this. I want to do some golf. I want to play some tennis. We're twins doesn't mean we do everything together, right? You figure golf out at a young age. That's that's not a bad one to find <laughs> early. So a chance for Rhode Island here. They get a couple of men on, only one down. And Matthew Feedy steps to the plate. On the ground to second will go to second for one and that'll be it but a good job by Luke Eidlett. He threw to Evan Schallert for the force. It's been an easy too. He's got to go glove side but watch the footwork here from Luke. So spin sets that right foot body opens up so it makes that throw a lot easier to second base. No chance for a double play there but at least keeps a runner off of second base and now. William Alexander's walked a few in this inning, just one pitch away from getting out of it. Good speed here. Chase Watts, he can bunt for a hit. You get a runner on third, and with a runner at first and third, see if Rhode Island puts something into action here to force a throw down there. Oh. They'll throw to the second baseman, and nobody was even running. Kind of a practice run through. That's right. <laughs> now we're loose. <laughs> now we're loose, and they know exactly what we're going to do. Jim and Amy offering encouragement from the stands. Oh. Good job by Chase to lay off that. Yeah. That's a good pitch. Tough one, too, for a lefty. Left on left. A pitch away from me when. Out of his hand, it looks like it's going to hit you, then ends up on the outside corner. 
Here comes the 2-2. That misses away. The Bowling Green crowd thought that was a strike. Take your time. You do it. No, no, no. Ball. And they're loaded. So a close pitch call. The ball leads to a bases loaded situation. Third walk of the inning. Hit it out. And the number nine hitter, James Calderella. The outfield is playing very shallow. Good rip at it. What? Good pitch. Ready to go right there. First pitch fastball going after it. We talked this year. Last year was the first year that the new bats came in. They performed pretty much like a wood bat. You start to see outfields play a little bit more like that. Try to take that bloop away. Good work on the plate. Harrison Yates presented a run from coming in. Prevented, I should say. Alexander working quickly on the ground to short. Schallert flipped to second, and they will leave him loaded. No runs come across. Both teams have threatened, and both teams have been denied. We are through two at the Little League World Series, and ice cream on tap for the day, 0-0. The Little League World Series. Some people need no introduction. No introduction necessary. Dugout, of course, all part of the history of Little League baseball, and Kentucky and Rhode Island 0-0 in the top of the third inning. Kyle Peterson, Carl Ravitch here, Julie Fowden down on the field, joined by a couple of very special guests, the former director of the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Jeff Idelson joining us and his friend Gene Fruth, who is a photographer. I got a chance to fly over to Cuba and experience Cuba with Gene. They have a new book out called Grassroots Baseball. It is interesting on the cover. That's a picture of Cuba, right? Absolutely. Old Havana. Tell us about the book. What's the purpose of the book and your grassroots baseball and your experience with baseball? As I traveled shooting Major League Baseball, as you know, I always took time to shoot the amateur game, the grassroots game. And this is a collection of my images from all around the world. There's an image for you right there, Gene. How about I that missed catch? that one, unfortunately. <laughs> well, you saw it with your eyes, though. It's in your head. Great catch by Colin Crane. So go ahead, continue. So 15 chapters, eight in the U.S., seven outside the U.S., and each chapter opens with a Hall of Famer or a legend from that region telling his story of what it was like growing up in that region. And Hall of Famers like Hank Aaron, Whitey Ford, Randy Johnson, who was just here. Yeah. Legend Fernando oh. Valenzuela from yeah. Mexico. Ichiro. Ichiro Suzuki from yeah. Japan. Uh, and many more. We have Cal Ripken Jr. who wrote the introduction. Uh, and Johnny Bench from mm. Binger, Oklahoma who wrote the afterword. And this one back up the middle. Another good play by Owen Pfeffer. What got you involved with the book, Jeffrey? Well, Gene was shooting for the Hall of Fame. And I got to see firsthand how much he appreciated the amateur game. And then it was about connecting her with Hall of Famers. And every single guy we talked to, all of them, all 15, the 13 Hall of Famers and the other three legends said absolutely want to be connected to this project. Cool. Part of a bigger project, grassroots baseball, which we're undertaking now, which is promoting the amateur game, giving back in underprivileged communities to help grow the game. Colin Powell. What was it about the amateur game for somebody that was involved with baseball at its highest level? I mean, you were dealing with Hall of Fame players oh. all the time. Why the amateur game? Well, eight years at the Major League level, 25 with the Hall of Fame, Carl. I thought it was time to go back and join Gene and promote the amateur game. And that part of our game doesn't get enough love in our opinion I'm so glad to see ESPN here in Williamsport we wanted to do our part by helping to promote it and grow it in those communities where kids may not have that opportunity Gene did you have a favorite stop was there one that, that stuck out more than any other oh uh, well there was many this one especially yeah. you know, I got a chance to shoot here in Williamsport a few years ago and um, a lot of special images came out of here and of course Little League helped me all around the world you know in the United right. States and outside connecting me with many little leagues um, all around so that's pretty special to me and the other I would say is uh, Mobile Alabama you know a place yeah. where five Hall of Famers are from and awesome. it's a very historical uh, chapter of the book how do people get the book uh, grassrootsbaseballbook.com and the proceeds today go to uh, uh, go to the little league and we're so yeah we're selling the book here um, on the concourse and uh, we have books signed by Randy Johnson Craig Biggio 
Thank you guys awesome. very much. Best yeah. of luck with the book. Absolutely. Terrific pictures, yeah. good stories throughout it. Grassroots Baseball, where legends begin. The photographs by Gene Fruit, and I can vouch they're all tremendous. That'd be a great photograph. We've got a great game going on here. Stay with us. The Little League World Series continues. back everyone our coverage from the Little League World Series continues of course you have two great stadiums here Lomity Stadium and Volunteer Stadium Lomity which all the kids talk about getting a chance to play on that grass perhaps matched by Volunteer both incredible facilities the international road to Williamsport look at Australia you're traveling a long way and a couple of days to get here and then you're as close as Guadalupe Take a look at the standings on the international side. This, of course, is a 10-day tournament. The teams that win move into the winner's bracket, the losers down to the loser side. And no team since we expanded back in 2001 from 8 to 16 teams lost their first game and won the whole World Series. So the top four teams on each side certainly have a statistical decided advantage. The team from Sydney lost its second game. They'll play one more as they've been eliminated from title contention but you've seen them all give me a little scuffle yeah, report uh, Curacao looked really good Curacao played in the opener through a, a short no hitter over four innings how about 12 ground ball outs one fly ball out one strikeout for a no hitter and that's good again we've seen great defense off the mound today, and, and balls the kids have to go bare hand spin and make a throw bare hand at a ball that's moving is not an easy thing to do but with these short bases sometimes if you go to glove it there's not, not enough time to make the transfer Right here, Luke Eidlett, who started this game on the infield, now comes in on the mound, takes care of it himself. It's an infielder. He knows how to make that play. He sure does. And uh, you see that with all the versatility of the kids. See, go from the mound to first base, sometimes behind the plate. Eidlett now in. William Alexander has been taken out, and he is currently in center field. Eidlett was at second. That's where Grayson Newman finds himself. And that was a good butt by Colin Crane, but he was retired. And now batting Lucas Tainis one more time. He grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Really cool book. I would uh, encourage people to get it, especially if you love baseball. Gene's pictures are unbelievable. They're from all across the globe. And that ball is ripped, and that one looks like it's going to be fair down the line and deep. Tainis steps on first. He hits second. And he is encouraged to stay right there at second base. <laughs> Not a lot of mixed message. Come on, come on, stay right there. Come on, don't move. <laughs> a little spinner on the inside part of the play. Lucas gets ahead of the bat out there, hooks it down the left field line. And with these outfielders playing a little bit more shallow, which we've seen across the board, if it gets over their head, it's going to be extra bases for sure. It's one out double right there. First hit of our ball game. Oh, and Pfeffer, and this one a little blooper. Trouble, it drops. So a double and a single, and now heading to second smartly, and he is safe. It's Owen Pfeffer, heads up baseball by a high IQ baseball guy in Owen Pfeffer. Not wasting any time, gets up there, first pitch, will flare to left field. It's going to fall the entire time, and it's a good read just to make sure from Tanis this ball lands. He's got plenty of time to get to third base. Then the play's all the way in front of Owen Pfeffer. He can see it, knows he's got enough time. We're, uh, we're not wasting too much time out there on the bump, are we? No, nope. get it and go. And the hitters are swinging. So that's a single. Rhode Island, after being no hit, started this Little League World Series 0 for 24. And now they are their last oh! two for two. Who breaks through first? Will it be Rhode Island now with second and third and only one man down for their cleanup hitter, Mason Crane? Oh, what a play at first throw home. Do we have a double play? No. Safe at home is Lucas Tatus. Chaz Huff did everything he could. What a play, but it's 1 0. Tell you what, he, he saved a run for sure because this ball gets down the line. Two are gonna two are gonna score. And he gotta take that first down. Momentum takes him over to first base. Watch. We're kind of fielding or guarding the line, but the left hander has to go backhand. Steps on it. It's all one motion, too. Even if he doesn't step on the bag, it's not gonna be any quicker. Steps on that base. Good timing over at third. He's going right on contact. Sees that ball down. Good break towards home. Rhode Island's on the board. Now Christopher Promatis. And he swings at the first one on the ground to short with two down across the diamond. 
And that'll do it. Oh, a chance Huff, maybe a little better throw knocks Tanis out at home. But it's Rhode Island who breaks through first. After a double and a single, they lead it one zip. We're midway through at the Little League World Series. Welcome back. Here we go. A little race down the hill. And the grass is now nearly back to its original form, so you can go a little ways. Oh, no. Hard to go anywhere when the defense against you has been so great. You know, you've seen everything. Uh, yeah, thanks, Rap. Yeah. Yep, seen every bit of it. And uh, you saw this yesterday. Jackson Knudsen goes full extension. Great Lakes would have taken a lead right there. Instead, he gets to read his own headline the wow. following day. How good is that? Every 12-year-old gets to do that. <laughs> yeah. Go grab the paper, read my name in the paper, made the play, and for Bowling Green, a bit more of it today. Cullen Crane stole one earlier. The shortstop full extension lays out. Putting it in play. He's got kids behind him that are making plays right now. <laughs> yeah, I just can't killed. believe it. Yep. Oh, a little tip of the cap, though, too. All right, then. I like that. Defense has been special, and so has Pfeffer on the mound. He has thrown 27 pitches, 21 of them for strikes. Nine great. outs. Nine outs and 26 pitches to start this thing. Start with Grayson Newman. Oh, look out. <laughs> Hit the bowl, and we are fine. All right, he want to stay. Again, I, I believe in the adage, if you're going to go, let's just go. <laughs> so. That's better in there for a strike two and one. You just missed the corner, you throw it over the backstop. It's the exact same thing. Exactly. one nothing Rhode Island in this elimination game. Good swing up this way. Stop just short thanks to the fencing in front of our booth. Haven't had one yet this year up this way. Anything? Nothing? In, no, anything over there? International, you get a ball yet? No, we had a few wasps. That was, wasps. That'll make things interesting, but right. we, we shooed them away. That's pulled foul. Full bucket of cotton candy. Always uh, wonder what the uh, parent to the left is thinking when this is pride going on. <laughs> Just beaming with pride right now because that's efficient cotton candy consumption. Woo. High cheese and down goes Newman. Catch all the excitement from all seven Little League World Series tournaments, which you've done, and now we're focused on the Little League World Series. Visitor information, score, stats, video highlights, and more. Visit littleleague.org. Strike one. Five strikeouts for Owen Pfeffer. Oh. So the kids play Saturday with all your baseball playing experience, and then you get here, and then you're sort of off until Thursday. Then it rains, so you're playing Friday. Oh. How, how difficult do you think the transition from all you've done in the summer to like a week off to this field and all that goes with it is? I think it's natural to. It's going to take a few innings. It may take a day. I think I would think the hardest thing for a 12 year old kid is you've seen this thing on TV. You, you've heard all about it. In some cases your own little league has been here before. And then you get here for yourself. And this is how tough it is to get here. District section state province or country the regionals and then you show up right here. So it is a long road just to get here. Oh. Uh -oh. Breaking ball that didn't break and uh, as you mentioned all of a sudden the pitch count which was so good. We'll struggle this inning with the control. Oh. That's ball four and that's a walk. First walk hey, by hey. Owen Pfeffer today. And go ahead Jameson head on down. That's four. <laughs> Let's go. Get your head in it. Kind of waiting for this guy to get a hold of one. William Alexander, the cleanup hitter. He struck out his first time up. Had David Ross up here yesterday. And one of the things you notice about William is he tends to get a little bit ahead. So he's out in his front foot instead of waiting back. And he said for a lot of the big lefties, Brian Howard, who was here a couple years ago, if you can stay back and drive it to left center left field. Center side. It's just not easy, especially for kids at this age. I mean, so often it takes 
a long time just to learn that body control. Ball gets away now. Great Lakes has a runner at second base. We were talking about yesterday on the international side. What, what impresses me, I think, the most about the hitters at this level is the kids that can do that. The ones that yeah. can take the ball the other way because when you're growing up, you just kind of you built to want to pull it. Alexander, that ball is smothered. Play. And a good job at second base by Mason Crane. And uh oh, Alexander fell hard on the first base bag. And now he got up and now he's slowly kind of going back down to the ground. It may have been an ankle that he rolled and he's in some pain over there. He hammered that baseball and Mason Crane on a short hop was able to make the play. The athletic trainer and the coaches out there to help William. See, Little League Baseball, those first bases and all the bases, uh, you can see it there in the lower left part of your screen. It kind of rests on top of a pad there, and it has some give in it. He hit it hard. Oh, he hammered this thing. That's a great play at second base by Mason Crane, too. You see that right foot when it comes down. Yeah, oh. he rolled that right ankle hard. And this is... It's, it's it's tough for kids growing up. Watch kind of that jump at first base. You can see that right ankle's mm. going to turn. And that, that, that hurts. It's tough because your instinct is to jump at the base yep. when you're this age. And, and you think it's going to get there a little bit quicker. But so often it's at full extension when when injuries can happen at first. And yeah, that was a significant roll of that ankle. So we're making sure that William Alexander is OK. The kids from Rhode Island all taking a knee right now. In fact, everybody that's on the field is down on a knee waiting. Obviously, mom and dad are a little concerned about William. He's sitting up and he's talking with the coaches. And now he's helped up and he's going to try to take all the pressure off of that right foot of his and be helped off the field. A lot of times they will quickly take an ankle like that. They'll do some x-rays on it. They'll wrap it in ice, too. It can balloon on you after a while. I think we've all seen the ankle roll and the impact it has sort of 12 to 24 hours later. Yeah, that, that's one where the picture tells you all you need to know. It's, yeah. it's going to hurt. You just hope it's sprained and that's it. But it, it's going to hurt either way. It's hard. It's hard to, to not convince yourself to jump at that base. So now with two outs and uh, everybody on the baseball field back to the game going on you have a runner at third base Jameson Knapper made it down there he got to second on a pass ball and then advanced on that play. And now they're trying to tie it up here with the hit pass ball any way they can. This is Luke Eidlett. He's going to do it. Singles in a left field. That brings in Napper and Luke Eidlid has tied the game up with a line drive. Bit of clutch hitting there from Luke. Well, Luke's already had a good defensive day. Made a good play out second base. Bare hands one when he comes on to pitch. Now this time gets a base runner at third base with two outs. Fastball he can handle. Barrels it up. Look at the head stay right on it. Right when it comes off the bat, he knows he ties this one up. And Fired up when he got down to first base. He's got Bowling Green on the board. Hey. I was robbed yesterday. He was got to hit it that Jackson Knutson made that hey. catch on. Number 24, Cameron Obi. Name familiar to those that follow Little League Baseball. His brother Devin played a couple years ago. He's got a big, powerful swing, but he misses there. I and mean, he's behind 0-2. And oh, 
brother continues to play baseball at a high level. Going to go to Duke University to play. And He's going to continue to play. That's a significant baseball program, isn't it, all of a sudden? Uh, yeah, Chris Powell's done a great job of building that Duke program. They've been a few games away from Omaha. Not a bad school either. Go down and hang out for a few years. There is that component. Kevin Obi will graduate high school in 2021, committed to Duke already. A little high, so good job by Cameron Obi after falling behind 0 and 2 and a little more difficult inning for Owen Pfeffer, who was terrific through the first three. Ooh, got him though, and Obi strikes out. Good pitch. But new ball game. Rhode Island fans rooting their team on. Same deal on the other side, KP. 1 1. Let's get a 4D look at it. Go get it, Luke. Those hands in the right position. Gets that baseball out in front of home plate. Pulls it to left field. Two out RBI eyes. Always look good. That one tied it. What a special day for baseball. You can't help but come here and feel like you're 12 again. Oh, a diving step. What a play. That one is gone. That's what the Little Leaguers wanted to see. Cubs and Pirates, and that is the Major League Baseball Little League Classic. That's tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern time. We'll start at 5.30 Eastern Baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown on ESPN and the app. We'll be at the Little League Complex with both teams, and then we will shift and head over to BB&T Ballpark. You are required to say historic Bowman Field, so Says we will, right there because it is historic. That's a pretty cool day, man. That's a really cool day. Look at this. We got cameras all over the place. That is historic Bowman Field right there, Rav, in the distance. Five, five miles, miles away. away. Yep. Bordered by that highway, it is five miles away. You know Soft what that's focus. across? What? The mighty, mighty sus? Is it right? Okay. Yeah, you cross, take a left, take a right, and you're there. By the way, today, John Lester on the mound, and the Cubs, who have been brutal on the road, leading in the bottom of the ninth, 2 nothing. Lester gave you five innings, didn't give up anything, but he did walk five. He struck out a handful. And they're trying to get a rare road win before they head to Williamsport tomorrow. And we'll see them at both fields interacting with all the kids. Hear from Steve Keener, the director of Little League International, Rob Manford, of course, the Major League Baseball Commissioner, and so many of the players will join us as well to talk about this experience. New pitcher for Rhode Island, and I should say for the Great Lakes, that's Everett Schallert, and he gives up a leadoff hit. Both teams putting the ball in play. Alex Anderson delivers the single. It's just tough to plate the guys. Will DiGiacomo, who we saw as a special pinch runner, is now going to bat and went into play left field. And some defensive changes for Great Lakes, too, with Glossix in left. Saul Geyer is in center field. Jamison Knapper over in right. Escalera, Eidlett, Newman, and Huff around the infield. And Harrison Yates stays behind the plate with Shallard on the bump. Bottom four of a six inning game. If it's tied after seven, after seven, not six, but seven, you go with the international rule, you put a runner on second base. Like that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so do I. What do you think? Uh, all in. <laughs> like that look, too. Hard to beat. Need the bunting, too. Yes. That's, that's, it it that's gives unnecessary. you that 1950s yes. feel. There's not enough bunting in the world anymore. <laughs> Some definite people at home thinking like, well, I've seen actually a bunch of bunts in the Little League World Series. Different. Different bunting. Different. I understand. I know where you're at. Multiple. Remember, I went to Ithaca, the Stanford of the North. So I am on the same level. Good spot. The Giacomo strikes out. I like it. Good hitter coming up here. Breaking balls early and watch that head stay right on it. Fastball throws it right underneath the barrel. It's tough when it's coming in on your hands down in the zone swings right over the top. Miles Fontaine. He's had various big hits during the course of this summer. 
Hesitated and didn't swing, and he gets a ball. Big Miles been around these kids since they were six, and he waited on that one, and he ripped it in the left field, and that one gets by the left fielder. Anderson hits third. He's being waved in. Here he comes, and a double for Fontaine, who comes up with another big hit. Good hitter, Miles Fontaine delivers. It's like you've seen this team before, Rav. Secret weapon off the bench, second time around for this Rhode Island team in the order. Miles Fontaine first at bat. Watch those eyes. Breaking ball, middle part of the zone. Glossick out there in left field just about cut this one off. The minute it gets by him, Alex Anderson off and running on first base, and Rhode Island's back in front. Now Blake Dolan, the scoring's picked up a little bit. Two runs for New England, one in the third, one here in the fourth. Kentucky got one in the top of the fourth. This is in the hole past the dive of Luke Eidlitt. Holding it third is Fontaine, but they're banging the ball around right now. The team from Barrington, Rhode Island. And it's the substitute bench players that have done it in Fontaine and Dolan. Love the base running at second base right now because you got to wait. Make sure this ball gets through. If it's gloved, it's an easy play at third. If you break on it, you can't take that chance right there. The minute that ball's through, Miles Fontaine's off and running, but a good job of waiting. Good job. They're going to take Go center, Sal, go to right. Shallard out of the game. He's a little frustrated. On the butt or on the steal? On the butt. Fake the throw to first and get the runner at third. Let's go. Throw starts. Little inside intel. If you're at home, don't tweet it out. Don't tell anybody what the game plan is. Jamison Knapper's coming in. They're going to bring a lefty in, try to make sure it stays just two to one. Above down at Lombardy and Volunteer. Two more elimination games tonight. Canada will take on Italy, and then at 8 o'clock Eastern time, right back here for Louisiana and Oregon. I see uh, the great Joe McCoy will be in the producer chair for that just left. He was, he was scouting. getting a feel for it all. Get locked in, make sure the mind's in the right spot. It will be. <laughs> New pitcher, Jameson Knapper in the oh. first pitch. He throws ball one. We're back to the top of the order for Cullen Crane. Blake Dolan is at first, and Miles Fontaine after that big double in RBI is at third base. Called strike right inside. Crane's right on the plate. I mean, like right on the plate. Oh. As a pitcher, how do you convince yourself when someone's that close to be able to throw it to the inside part? Forget like inside, but just inside of the equation. plate. You got to take him out. Eliminate of him. You have to. Yeah, it, it's. Because a lot of times when a hitter's on there, it's going to tell you maybe what the, where they want it and where they don't want it. Hitter mm -hmm. on the plate, a lot of times, you can tie him up inside. To third, tough play. It gets underneath the glove of Escalera. That's going to bring in a run. Tough play for Matthew Escalera, and Rhode Island increases its lead to 3-1. to one. You know, it's tough for a few reasons. One, as a third baseman with a left-handed hitter, you're not going to see this ground ball very often. Usually, the pull side, the ground ball is going to happen more to the pull side. So as a third baseman, you're playing it a little bit. It gets on you quick. Just not one you see a lot has that cut spin gets away right there and Rhode Island adds another. Still one down, two on. Last time he was up, Lucas Tannis hit a double to left field, so they're playing a little deeper this time. Ball one, can't find it. No advance over there at second base. Called the relafata about Idolan, I should say. Another one ripped into left field. That's in the gap. That gets down. It's heading towards the wall. Lucas Tanis does it again. A double scores Dolan. And following him is Cullen Crane. A big two-run double. Second double of the game. Now we get the bats going. No hits in the opener. Plenty of hits here. 
In the second game for Rhode Island. This ball up in the zone. Lucas Tanis doubled on the left field line earlier. Now this time in a left center field gap. And that'll score two. Cullen Crane all the way from first base. Mom and dad are fired up. Why wouldn't you be after this swing? They've watched their son have a pretty cool offensive day at Lamity Stadium so far. Beth and Thomas ecstatic about what's going on for their son and their team from Barrington, Rhode Island, now leading at 5-1 in the bottom of the fourth inning, and still one out. Hey. Jamison Knapper's pitch well. He's throwing strikes. They've just hit the ball hard. And you see they were no hit in their first game. Oh. The beauty of baseball isn't it? Every day is different. Turn that page. Turn it quick. Pfeffer back to the pitcher. They'll go to first, and that's the out. Tana stays put at second. See the bottom line there? Venezuela with a win over Australia today, two to nothing. So Australia has been eliminated from title contention. Venezuela plays defense as well as anybody yes, they can they pitch it and figure out a way to manufacture some runs. It's a tough field over there. Japan looks really good. They put 19 on the board yesterday. Hey. South Korea serve notice. They're back again. And Curacao, typical dominant self. Curacao. Mexico won their opener. Talking about this yesterday with Curacao. I guess it was the day before. You know what the population of Curacao is? 160,000 people. And think of that with the number of, of guys that they've sent to the big leagues just in recent memory. Right. So think of your town in the States that has 160,000 people. That's the population that Curacao is, is sending multiple guys to the major leagues. Disproportionate. Yeah, it's how cool great, to see. The, great the baseball is there. And they said just how much the sport has grown since they started making it here. Yeah. Because there's been more eyes on it on the island. Fastball swing and a miss. First base is open. No foul. So Crane is going to be safe at first base. That one got through Harrison Yates. Down to third on that. Pass ball goes Lucas Tanis. Another break here for Rhode Island. And Christopher Pramanis will be the number nine hitter of the inning. Uh oh, that one gets no, 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 by no, no, no. and Tana hey, hey, stays, hey. but Crane goes down to second. Uh oh. What happened? Things are going really well. You'd figure like coach and manager's wife. We've seen it all before. Yeah, but nope. Isn't it different when your kid's in there? Yeah. Christopher had a big uh, hit last time, but it was caught. Okay. Another strike. I don't even want to look at mom anymore. I mean, the stress is so high here. <laughs> You're ahead. <laughs> You're up 5 1. We're all right. Oh. No, 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 no. Okay, well, we get a 3 2. Where are we now over there on the side? Are we looking? Are we hiding? Nope, we're not looking. No, nope, we just peeked up. Oh, now we're not looking anymore. Christopher strikes out. They played a crooked number four spot. Couple of doubles. Get up, Rhode Island. Barrington went off with the doubles. They had three doubles in the regionals. They had three doubles in the last two innings. 
Miles to go, people. Miles Fontaine. Go on and send you nine to the plate. Works out well for Rhode Island. Four in the inning, 5 1 lead. Well, the big uh, bottom half of the fourth inning, Rhode Island scores fourth, and now lead at 5 1. This elimination game at the Little League World Series, and it's now time to meet the player. Brought to you by Chick fil A, and it's all about that guy, Lucas Tanis. Father Dad is the VP of scouting for the New York Mets. So Julie's going to talk to him and his mom in just a moment. Two time MVP in flag football. And he wants to be on Broadway. He's not necessarily want to be a baseball player. He wants to just go to the big stage. He's well rounded. Been great on the big stage today, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, the hands and the feet work pretty well. Lucas Tan has two doubles today. One time down the left field line. That was the first hit of the game, then this one. The scored two more, extended that Rhode Island lead. Mom and Dad got to be pretty fired up about what they've seen with the boy today. Go ahead, Jules. All right, Tom. What was your reaction to the second double? You should know I punched you. Uh, well, on the first one. Uh, great. Yeah, he did a great job. Stayed on the ball. He, he saw it. Started to swing early. Uh, you know, he's he's hot right now. <laughs> Said like a VP of scouting right there. You've been to a lot of ballparks, minor leagues, major leagues. What do you think of this one? This is gorgeous. Uh, I, I said this to my wife earlier. This is like Disneyland if you're a baseball fan. Uh, it, it really is. The atmosphere is incredible. Um, and uh, I mean, the kids, the fans, we're, we're really lucky to be here. We were talking before the game about what age do you start as a scout? You've been doing this for a long time, a couple decades. You start looking at kids because you get parents who are panicked if their kid by the age of 12 isn't getting scouted. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the panic is, it keeps getting earlier and earlier with the parents. Uh, but uh, nice play. Uh, the, uh, you know, usually around 15 or 16, uh, the showcase circuit gets really big around 16 and 17 uh, where the kids go to the area code games and perfect game and, uh, you know, that's where it starts to ramp up with what we're looking for with players. You mentioned maybe seeing a video, though, of Little League player before. Yeah, so we were, uh, you know, in our draft meetings, our pre-draft meetings, 2014, we're watching, we, you know, like, like all draft rooms, we're watching video of everyone. Um, and one of our interns comes up with a video of Michael Conforto at 11 years old playing right here on this field, hitting an opposite field home run, which he does pretty well in the big leagues. So, yeah, yeah. Enjoy the game. Congratulations. Thank Julie, thank you very much. The Conforto deal worked out all right. Yeah, that did. Played here, played yep. in Omaha for Oregon State. Now he's, uh, he's had a great run for the Mets. No one else works out pretty well? Jacob DeGrom on the mound, and that's the deal tonight for the Mets. Yeah. That can make the look real good, aren't they? Yeah. In there for a strike. Quickly, you have an idea, because you're around the college game and the amateur game all the time, but he said, you know, 15, 16, that's when we start to see what we're looking for. What, what are they looking for for people at home? What are they looking for? Well, athleticism, hands, arm action, all those different things. And I, yeah, there's athleticism right there. Right there. Make, make that play. Lucas Tain is making his dad happy right there. The first baseman comes off, fields it. It's not easy for a pitcher right here because you got one chance at it. Route takes him directly to first base. It's another one, two, three inning for Owen Pfeffer. Only seven pitches in the inning, and Rhode Island feeling pretty good about themselves right now. Heading to the bottom of the fifth, leading by four. That's how you do it. Lucas Tanis comes in. His buddy Owen Pfeffer runs behind him, and boom, beats Eli Cries to the bag. from shortstop Cullen Cran. They're just beautiful. They let you know what's going on. Our Honda game summary also helps you understand what's going on. And right now it's the Ocean State, Rhode Island over Kentucky. Five to one, only one hit for Kentucky. Yeah, we were one, one in the fourth. And then Rhode Island with a four spot in that inning. Kentucky's defense has been great. Nine out of the 12 outs recorded by that defense. And Owen Pfeffer has been outstanding on the mound. Efficient. Yep. Three doubles in the fourth for Rhode Island. So Henry Kelsey bats for the first time today as he looks at ball one from Jamison Knapper. Winner today stays alive. The loser eliminated from title contention. A couple more games coming up. Six o'clock on ESPN. Italy and Canada. And then we're back here at eight o'clock Eastern time. Louisiana on ESPN two. We'll take on Oregon. Boy, it was loud here last night. The fans of Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, that guy would have had no chance last night, given how loud it was. I mean, it felt like it was the final game of the World Series. 
Good job by mom. I think it's always important too, as you know, when you're holding somebody that's trying to sleep, you got to go to sleep too. Like you've got to just let them know I'm no out too. Movement. We're both yep. shutting it down here. I'm with you. Perfect. Big swing and a miss from Henry Kelsey, whose favorite subject is woodshop. Oh, like that. Yeah. Oh, he ripped that one. That's that's good wood. Throw to first is not going to be in time. Good job, good job by that. Henry Kelsey. That one's uh, built a little birdhouse in Woodshop. You know the birdhouse? That's like the first project you ever do. It's like just four easy things to nail together. Mine was like the little bookshelf. Not even really a bookshelf, <laughs> just a book holder. And, and I failed miserably at it. I think Henry's probably a little better at that. Tell you one thing, Rhode Island here has really in the last couple of innings hit the ball and they've hit the ball hard. Strike one to Matthew Feedy. All the substitute players for Rhode Island have gotten into the game. That mandatory play rule, such an integral part of Little League. And three right. of the four got hits. Rightly so, exactly. A lot of times you see those substitute players used, you know, in the five, six, seven, eight, nine spot in the batting order. And for Rhode Island, to your point, the six through nine hitters are four for seven with three runs and two walks. It's getting it done. Yeah, you played uh, pro ball, obviously, in college ball at the highest level. When you hear a vice president of scouting talk about those showcases and 15 and 16 year olds, we encourage, and I know you do too, sort of the multiple sport approach to a particular age. What's your experience yeah. tell you about that? I, well, I think it's as long as you can. We were talking about it on the air yesterday. I've, I've yet to hear a college coach say that, that they want to recruit the kid that only plays baseball. They, they prefer the ones that a little bit more well-rounded, and I think it's because you learn more. I mean, just from an athletic standpoint, play basketball, play football, whatever it is. I mean, we showed Mookie Betts bowling yesterday. Right. It's, there's different skill sets that ultimately help you when you're playing this game. Yeah, the whole specialization thing early, just I, I'm, I'm not a not a fan. And how do you quantify early? What's early for you? What's early in your world? This age. And there's plenty of it. Too early, yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of it. I recently had knee surgery. I'm in physical therapy and there's some kids that are probably 14 or 15 and one of them was a baseball pitcher. And I said, what else do you play? And he said, just baseball. I mean, it, and unfortunately it, it rang like, well, of course. Well, that's why you're in here. Tommy John surgery. So many kids pitch and then they go and pitch for other teams. So and pitch limits don't really apply. Uh, they don't. But I would tell you, I think it's one of the better things that Little League's done. And, and they do a lot of things from a safety standpoint. It's just that hard, hard pitch count, mandatory rest all the way through the season. Right. Because it does limit some things. But still, you got to take time off. Even if this is the only game to play, take three months off. Better for your body. I think the other component to it is when you get exposed to different teammates and different coaches, you are exposed to different styles. You're exposed to different ways that uh, you are being motivated. I think that's really important because how many times do you look back on your child and say that coach really made an impact? Right. It doesn't mean that he was only a baseball. He, it could have been a soccer kid. coach, could have been a coach Let's from volleyball. Six. Who knows Reset where, but you Let's get exposed to different people and personalities. Oh. I remember Little League Baseball, a lot of my friends made the major leagues and I was sitting there in triple-A baseball, the lower level, and that was the coach that had the greatest impact on me. Somehow he convinced me really? that I was important to that group. 
I remember his name was Tim Halloran. Like, I remember those so things, and that was a over the top, lower level. Sparks. This is number nine. Just have some confidence. Let's go. You're fine. You're fine. Let's get out of this real quick so we can come in and hit some. Let's go. You know, it's so true. You don't know where that impact's going to be. And it, it doesn't mean it's it's always the the greatest X's and O's coach. A lot of times it's the one that just knows how to motivate and it carries you through whatever sport you're doing. I, I mean, literally, when I got the phone call, you didn't make the majors. I cried. I was, like, so depressed. He turned that negative into such a positive, the best experience I had at the Little League level. Oh. To a board for Blake Dolan, who is batting in the nine spot. He also is one for one with a run. Big gap out there in left center field between Glossick and Newman, and that one was way outside. And now you got guys right at here, second right and third. Right. So the winner of this one will take on the loser of tomorrow's game between Hawaii and New Jersey. That one's high. New Jersey and Rhode Island played their regional games in Bristol, so they are familiar with each other if it goes that way. All right, now. Throw that first one, get yourself all the way back. Infield drawn in right now, down four, so you just got to make sure you get that hard ground ball. Got a lead right now, you're probably not doing it, but it's going to take a chance here in the fifth. There's a 3 2. Oh. Fouled off. Good job by Dolan. Stand up there, see something you don't like, maybe second guess the pitch you're going to throw. You got plenty of time. Step off, regroup, get back up there, go to work. Slow roller and halfway. They throw back to third and out of third. What a job over there. Luke Eidlett did. Runner was off third base, and right away, Matthew Feedy down there, the third base coach, is uh, instructing his manager to go ahead and review that one. Henry Kelsey was about seven, eight feet off the bag when Eidlett fired over there. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I think he's going to be safe. Had a really good throw over there, too, and he had to deal with a pitcher. Jamison Napper, the pitcher, getting out of the way, throws a strike. Looked like that right hand might have got to the bag just before the tag got there. That third base coach, Matthew Feedy, got a chance to uh, talk with him at the regional in Bristol. And he was a hockey player under our buddy Dave Belial, who, of course, uh, led a couple of uh, Cumberland, Rhode Island teams here to Williamsport and has worked with us as an analyst during the regionals in Bristol. David, his dad, legendary hockey coaches in Rhode Island, and Frank played hockey for them. Then he went on to West Point and played four years of hockey. Great personality. So he's got two different personalities. He's got his hockey coach personality. Okay. You know, yelling baseball and coach screaming, personality. and he's got his baseball coach personality. Before he tagged your shoulder? It's disgusting with... I thought that's what I saw, but... Henry Kelsey down there. It was bad, bad. <laughs> I like this. So we were adamant right away. Yeah. We, we got a review. We got a review. Then a little bit later on, hey, uh, did your hand get back in time? <laughs> Not sure I saw a double up here. <laughs> and I think it did. So watch the extension of the right hand. He's going all the way to that outside corner, too, which is where you want to go. It makes it tougher. Gloves got to go a little bit further to make the tag. 
Anything from the way that Matthew Escalera fielded that ball out in front of third base that maybe you would encourage? Can you, if, it, yeah. if you wait at the bag and it gets to you, you don't have to move so far? Yeah, I think the hard thing on that, though, a natural reaction with a ground ball to that side if you're a third baseman is you think the play is going to be at home play. Right. So you probably don't think the play is going to be there. Yep. Probably take a few steps to the infield, and when you get back, you got to reach just a little bit further for the tag. Well, Little League does such a great job with their replays. They generally are doing it in about 30 seconds or less. This one clearly has taken a little longer because it is a really close play. But we're giving the equipment back and we'll have our call in a second. Bases are loaded as the call's overturned safe at third, so one out. Infield will stay in. And a contact hitter in Cullen Crane at the plate. A lot of times when the infield comes in, you see these guys just end up blooping it over the head. Look out, that was right over the head of Crane, but over the head of that drawn in infield. Infield fly is in effect with one out and the base is loaded. But he beats it into the ground and the throw home and the force out is made. So Luke Eidlin, boy, right back at you. Two down. How about having a guy like Crane at the leadoff spot? Like every time he's up, he's going to make contact with it. He's going to put it in play. Exactly what you want in that spot. And for Luke Idlett out at second base. It was at second, then on the mound, then back to second. Those are two really good plays. Infield in again. That time it's a forced play, so he's got to come home. Could only get one, but that's a big second out. And here comes the double guy. Lucas Tain has two doubles today. Oh! And as his dad said, he's hot right now. <laughs> what do you got? Three doubles? Where, where are you? Big Luke warm. Spot in him. Hey. He's running warm right now. Hey. Tough pitch down at the knees called a strike. Looks like don't you know who I am? You got two dubs. You can call that a ball. <laughs> Is that what it said? He read his mind. He goes the other way, and it's underneath the glove of Idlett. Right 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 Lucas right Tanis, third hit, and another RBI. He's got three of those, and half of them have been knocked in by Lucas Tanis. They lead it 6 1. But the yeah. adjustment here, Rev. That's what I'm saying. So last pitch he thought was a little bit down. This one's in almost the exact same spot. Now we're going to shorten up with two strikes. Two doubles on the day. Pitching about the same spot that was just called a strike. Shorten up, shoot it to right, score another run. Have yourself a day, Lucas. Good <laughs> defensive play over at first. Three knocks. No, oh, and no, Pfeffer. No. And we'll just hold on to that with a tag. Both hands and... The glove surrounding the baseball, the wrist there as it pops out, but not happening with Luke Eidlin. Right now it's Lucas Tanis world. We're just trying to live in it. <laughs> He's been the guy. 6-1 and the last chance coming up for Kentucky. All right, Rhode Island leading Kentucky 6-1. The sixth is the first big number. The second big number, KP, is the one in the H column. Only one hit for Kentucky. Only one hit. Owen Pfeffer's going to work into the sixth inning. He's thrown just 55 pitches. Amazing. Because he's pounded the zone the entire night. Five strikeouts for Owen. Elevated a fastball right there. He's shown you a little breaking ball. But the biggest thing is he's got a head. He's got a head the entire night. Love the way the lefty started this game. Just kept coming at guys. Here's a 4D look. How about this at extension? All right. Right when that. Front foot hits, head right on home play, gets all the way out there, lets that baseball go. What I really like, he, he's not he's not that big of a kid, right? but he's been thrown inside the entire night. He's thrown two pitches for a strikes, five innings, just one hit, just one walk, six punch outs, and he's got a chance to finish this one off and keep this the rest of this Rhode Island pitching staff from having to throw anything to that. 
He's 4'11", weighs 92 pounds. His form oh. is terrific, and that one is a ball to start. Last chance for Bowling Green, Kentucky. Kentucky had one unearned run in their opening loss to Minnesota, and here they are with just one run today. Oh. And this is, speaks to anybody that's at home, and they got little league kids, and they're eight or nine, and think someday we're going to be there. It is a more difficult challenge when you get to this level. You've come through your, as Kyle pointed out, your districts, and then oh. your sectionals and your states, and you're really feeling good about yourself. And then you realize, like, now we're taking on the rest of the country, and you run into some buzz saws here. That's why this is the cherry on top of the uh, ice cream sundae. You've accomplished oh. so much just to yep. get here. Just to, just to be able to hang out here for 10 days. Walk to start off to six. Good start for Kentucky. The journey to the League World Series starts in T-ball. Visit littleleague.org slash T-ball. Learn how to give the youngest Little Leaguers the opportunity to have a good time Nobody and learn out. the game Nobody as well. Shallow to board. Here's Grayson Newman. Oh. That was a little high. Who doesn't like a little chicken Alfredo, huh? I might get the call tonight. <laughs> Woo! Hit that one really hard. That foul barrel right there. Scratch. So your dinner choice is going to be dictated by Grayson Newman today, huh? I like it's it. It's a great idea. I like it. Oh. Popped up center field Anderson and is there he backed up and he came in to make the play and one man is down. Okay Fleming Dave Ross and Sebastian Salazar with the international game coming up a little less than an hour from now over on ESPN and we got the rally caps and the rally cups going. Yeah, and I just see the nod there, the approval. Like, yeah, that's yeah, what we that's need. Good work. <laughs> that's what we need. That is right good now. work. Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> On the ground, and that is through. Wow, it looks like Lucas for a second thought maybe his second baseman would help him out there, but Mason Crane wasn't close to it. A little tweener. Now you get first and second one down. Good action. We got two men on. Pitch count 65. Little convo here to settle it down. We're doing awesome out here, okay? So the situation is we got guys on first and second, one out, right? So, so here's the thing. The force is at any base, right? First, second, or third. Belly up on defense. Don't let it go by. Make the play, just like we always talk about. Fundamentals first. See it in the glove. Make the play. Look, you just stay focused, baby. You're one of the main reasons why we're in the position we are to be here. You're pitching phenomenal today. All the credit in the world. You just keep pounding the strike zone. Everything's going to work out. You got one of the best defenses in all Little League Baseball right behind you. Don't forget that. Don't worry about it. I got that. <laughs> coach, Coach, we're going to talk about something else. <laughs> a big point to make. Hey. Inch hitter coming up here, Coach. Hold on. Let's talk about the matchup here. We're not taking the FEF out. I'll tell you that. No, sir. We're going to ride the FEF. Saul Geyer is the pinch hitter. <laughs> Without question, my favorite part of the meetings on the mound, especially when the kids yes. start offering some thought. Right at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever the point is, it is the most important point that's going to be made in this minute. And it, it, it goes up in importance <laughs> if you don't get an immediate reaction back. Oh. 
one a little high. Barrington joining Coventry and Warwick North, Cranston West, Cumberland American. Those were the Ryan Little Leaguers that made it all the way here to Williamsport the last six seasons. Take. <laughs> Quickly points to that first base on for I, I want to appeal that. You don't know if you don't ask. All right. Double play would end it. 3 2. Walk would load him up. Strikeout. Oh, and Pfeffer. One out away as Rhode Island tries to continue along this path to a Little League World Series title. Yeah, four seamer grip it. Hands aren't quite big enough to use two fingers, so we had to use three. That sure. is beautiful. Let's it go. Seven strike out of the game right there for Owen Pfeffer. One out away from Rhode Island playing on. Good hitter here. Luke Eidlitz hit it hard a couple of times. And here he goes another one. Left field. Back goes Feeney is there to make the play. And Rhode Island gets a complete game from Owen Pfeffer. And oh, down goes Pfeffer. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Tainus there to bring him down. And Rhode Island gets a win six to one behind a complete game 72 pitch effort. Hey, that's the best sign there. Big number 25 who rolled back that anchor. William walking. Alexander is back good. out there walking. He's the first guy to congratulate the kids from Rhode Island. That is good, good. to see. William Alexander left the game, rolled his ankle. He's getting a low from some of the coaches from Rhode Island who are checking on him, making sure he's okay, and that is good to see. You can see the kids saying, you okay? Well, Bowling Green, Kentucky had a terrific summer. All sorts of offense as we see Alexander jogging out towards left field where they'll have another team meeting. We're going to donate back home. We're going we're gonna to So I want to stay in touch with you. Let's get together. Right? No, it's, it's awesome. No, it's okay. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you're doing this. Yeah. I don't know how much you're doing for the program, right. buddy. Great job. Oh, that's emotional right there. That's yeah. terrific. That's Jeff Goodnight, whose son, Julie Foudy, told us earlier, passed away back in 2017. The Rhode Island kids all touched Goodnight's shirt. And you just heard the coaching staff say, and you can see some tears in the eyes of uh, Goodnight. We're going to make a donation to the Mason Goodnight Foundation. They didn't know each other before they got here to Williamsport. And now the impact of uh, baseball and this community, you can see it right there. That's terrific. Yeah, and, and Jeff has talked about it, too. I mean, he, he said, if I didn't have Little League Baseball, I don't know what I'd do. November and March is tough. But yeah, these kids are my Mason. And he's had a chance to be around it. Obviously, the jersey went through the handshake line again, was in the dugout the entire time. And for Jeff, you know that just being on this field is, is at least something to make him smile right now. There are the kids going over to the jersey of Mason Goodnight. We heard from his mom yesterday talk about how the entire community of Bowling Green has rallied around the Goodnight family and how supportive they've been in the face of such tragedy. Mason's Marvels will see their title contention chances eliminated today, but this team is way bigger than a Little League World Series title. And so is that guy and his personality and all the kids that lost one of their best buddies back in 2017. Rhode Island will win this one. We'll have much more coming up. This presentation of Little League World Series continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations.